located near the city of Madrid. It took about 21 years to build it from 1563 to 1584. One of the main reasons that it was created was because Philip II, the absolute ruler during this time, wanted to build a palace where all of the Spanish sovereigns, starting with Charles V, former Holy Roman Emperor, who was also his father, could be buried. He also wanted to establish a headquarters in order to run a strong, centralized Spanish state. Despite his huge success in El Escorial, Philip was stubborn, bitter, and paranoid. But with this refined taste that he possessed in art and power, he was able to establish impactful El Escorial is a significant representation of absolutism. This is due to the absolute role King Philip possessed, the control he had over the church, as well as the intricate designs and extraordinary details in the palace. As stated before, the creation of El Escorial started with the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V and was continued by his son Philip II. Philip II wanted to create a more complex structure that functioned as a royal palace, monastery, and college. Philip encouraged many travelers that were visiting Spain to come to El Escorial so that he could show them this glorious palace. One of the famous groups that journeyed to Spain visiting Philip's masterpiece were Spanish nobles around 1584. The main reason that Philip wanted to bring them to his palace was to allure them with, it, with its extraordinary features. The nobles were so pleased that they stated, so magnificent a thing whose like we have never seen or expected to see. This shows how El Escorial really helped Philip to establish an absolute and imperial role as a Roman emperor during this time due to the overall style and his refined taste during the Renaissance. Philip built a church in El Escorial to have complete control of the clergy and the Pope. By having a church in El Escorial, he was able to monitor the clergy and the Pope to make sure that they weren't going against him and threatening his power in any way. Philip kept the power in his hands and out of the Pope's hands by making all of the major ecclesiastical appointments. This means that Philip appointed all of the major positions of the church. Also, Philip maintained his absolute power by approving all papal bulls before they could be published. A papal bull is a kind of public decree or charter that is issued by the Pope of the Catholic Church. Lastly, Philip enforced religious unity in his empire, turning the inquisition of the Catholic Church against Protestants and other heretics. Overall, El Escorial, in part, contributed to Philip's role as absolute monarch by allowing him to have control over the clergy and the Pope. Not only did El Escorial help Philip II to have control over the clergy, but he also had control over the nobility. They were not involved in the direct administration of Castile and therefore were given very little political power. El Escorial was very symmetrically organized and it had an unornamented exterior. This palace was different at the time because it did not agree with architectural styles in the Iberian Peninsula. Juan de Herrera was the designer of this palace and he completed the building after Toledo died. He was known for his severe classicism, which was influenced by the Italian architectural works. The interior of El Escorial is elaborately decorated, and there were many depictions of saints and kings. Specifically, there was a lot of paintings of King Philip II all around the palace. His paintings showed who was in control of Spain, and it also showed his wealth and power. Since this building stood out from the others at this time, El Escorial is the most important architectural monument in Spanish Renaissance. Because of this, El Escorial made a long-term effect on the Renaissance art of Europe. One philosopher that would have probably agreed with the building of El Escorial is Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes believes that humans were 
all naturally selfish and greedy. So everyone should hand over all their rights to a strong ruler. This was in order to avoid civil war and political conflicts. His ideas supported absolutism and the idea of Philip II building El Escorial and having complete control over the people. Hobbes would have probably also supported the fact that Philip II ruled as an absolute monarch and developed illegal laws and ideas such as ordering murders. People basically had to ask his approval before doing things. This absolute rule that Philip created really shows the authority that he had over people with the help of El Escorial. Overall, El Escorial was a key aspect to establishing an influential absolute rule for King Philip II. All of the kings after him did not use the power of El Escorial to their advantage and therefore were not successful rulers. El Escorial was also one of the most ambitious monuments created during the Renaissance in Spain. It inspired many new architectural techniques from its unique exterior, as well as the incredible paintings on the inside. El Escorial also allowed Philip II to have complete power over the clergy and even the Pope. This was due to the fact that he built a church in the palace where he could watch over every affair the clergy and Pope dealt with. The building of El Escorial is a very significant historical monument. Not only does it have unique and extravagant architecture, but it helped King Philip II possess control and power over everyone as an absolute ruler.